Hey everyone, Sean here, and today I want to talk about something very important. It was brought up to my attention recently that uh, some of the services that I'm recommending, you know, in my free course and in my videos, um, are getting orders from people who are my referrals, right? So some of the people who use my uh, referral link to use these services, I'm not going to specify which services uh, they are. It could be a ghostwriting company, it could be a cover design company, it could be a formatting company. You know, I recommend a lot of things. I'm not going to say which one, but one of these guys who pride themselves in you know providing high quality work, really contributing to you know the self publishing industry and really serving the customer, right? And you know they believe in providing high quality services. And they told me that some of my referrals, one of uh, some of you guys uh, who used my link, is ordering books that are straight up just ripping off a successful book, you know, by a successful author. So I looked into it. I, I they sent me, you know, the example, or you know, not the example, but like exactly what books were ordered and. Uh, the problem here, the issue was, there were two people who used my link and ordered from uh, this service that was straight up just ripping off a successful book. And I saw it, you know, I saw exactly what was happening where it's not even, you know, ripping off from another self-published book or anything like that. This was, you know, it's like ripping off this book. It wasn't this book exactly, but <clears throat> say you there was an, a very successful author, you know, hundreds of reviews right and you know the book that was getting ordered uh, was the exact same title which the title wasn't trademarked it was a generic phrase so you know I mean if you're trying to rank for the keyword it makes sense to put it in the title but then you have to make sure the subtitle is like completely different you know but the subtitle too it was like pretty much exactly the same just with like literally maybe two to three words different okay so the title is exactly the same. The subtitle is like 95% the same. And the issue is not just one person, you know, ordered the book. There was another person, a second person who ordered the book in the exact same keyword with the exact same title and the subtitle, like very, very similar. So that definitely becomes an issue. This service provider was not happy about it. I'm, you know, I'm not happy about it because it's not what I teach, right? You know, it's good to get inspiration from a successful book, yes. And because we're playing the SEO game, you know, if it's a generic keyword, yes, you can have it in the title. But preferably you, you know, add a few words after the keyword or something to change it up, especially if you're trying to compete with a, a successful, like, you know, authority book. I will show you an example uh, because in the last video, I explained this where, you know, some of the things you don't want to do when you're creating your titles. And for some reason, my last video got like no views at all. So I'm sure a lot of people didn't see it. So I'll show you what I mean. So I have Emotional Intelligence 2.0. It is not trademarked. In the last video, I showed you how to check for trademarks. The Emotional Intelligence keyword itself is not trademarked. And Emotional Intelligence 2.0, the phrase adding 2.0, is not trademarked as well. But as you can see, there's a very successful you know, book on this title, right? So what would happen if you go and publish a title that's exactly the same emotional intelligence 2.0 and I'll show you one book that uh, I don't think it's that one even it has a bad review it's this one right here I'll show you what I mean so yes it's not trademarked but what happens if you just copy a title from a very successful book right um, and this is what happens I meant to get a copy of the book by Travis Bradbury you know, with the same title for required class. I realized it was not the same, one star. It's a predatory imitation of a real book by Travis Bradbury and Gene Greaves. Okay, so look at this one too. It, the original book was designed by Travis Bradbury and Gene Greaves. What they did, or actually, I guess the, the pen name isn't too similar, so that's not a problem, I guess, but the title is, you know, too similar, and that's what happens, right? People will buy your book 
thinking it's the original book. And if your whole strategy, if your whole strategy to get sales uh, for your book is to trick people into thinking that your book is the original book from another very famous, you know, uh, author, then that is not good. That's, you know, close to scamming people or pretty much scamming people, right? You, you never want to trick people into buying your book. And another thing people do, you can see here, is the pen name, you know, that you publish under. So emotional intelligence also is very, uh, this Daniel Goleman is a very famous author who published books on emotional intelligence, very well known. He pretty much coined the term emotional intelligence from as far as I know. And then there's these self-publishers coming in, naming themselves Brandon Goleman, right? With the same last name. There is uh, um, another person, I think, from what I know. Okay, look at this, Brandon Bradbury, because of the other book, right? Emotional Intelligence 2.0 was from Travis Bradbury. Um, so it's like, it's so scammy. It's very, very scammy. You don't want to, your whole strategy shouldn't be tricking people into thinking your book is from somebody else's. You know, you want to actually publish something that is, you know, unique on your own. It has its own unique selling proposition, right? You don't want to just rip off, you know, what's working and rip it off. You want to get inspiration, but also add something unique in your book, you know, find different ways to serve the reader. Just straight up ripping off is very, very, I mean, it, it makes like the whole industry, the whole publishing industry hate these self publishers. And I mean, it, you know, it makes me like kind of frustrated too, because it's definitely what, not what I teach, but because, you know, because some of, the, some of these people are using my affiliate link, I guess, and, you know, ordering the service, you know, the service provider kind of associates me with this too, right? Even though I'm not teaching it, you know, so that's kind of frustrating on my side too, but it's not really about that. It's more so about the whole publishing industry, you know, having a negative effect from people who are doing this. Because if this happens, right, I mean, Amazon's getting stricter and stricter over time because of these people who take shortcuts, you know, and another problem is like keyword stuffing. So I'll show you an example with keyword stuffing. All right. So under this keyword, dark psychology, there's a ton of people just spamming books and keyword stuffing. It's super irritating. Um, I hate it. And this is a perfect example here. The title, Manipulation, NLP, Body Language, Stoicism. It doesn't even make sense. These topics, like Stoicism doesn't even go together with these topics, you know? And we have, I mean, these are one, two, three, four keywords just stuffed in the title. And then we have Dark Psychology, Deep Learning. Deep Learning isn't even about psychology, you know? And we got Mind Control Persuasion, How to Manage Your Emotion, Influence People. That's like 10 keywords and some people even put like more keywords in the series and even the pen name is a keyword it's insane okay and this is exactly why this is exactly why recently uh kdp had i believe uh, another update in terms of the content guideline when you try to keyword stuff so much like even if it's way more natural and you know it makes sense to add those keywords sometimes you get emails from them saying hey your title is causing a misleading experience because of maybe a, a in um, like unnatural amount of keywords in the title or something. I got the email once, even though the title sounded way more natural, in my opinion, it wasn't a problem, but you know, KDP rejected it, right? So I had to change it. Um, so that's a perfect example of why these people who do this kind of stuff, is harming the entire publishing industry, you know, because everybody gets affected, right? KDP makes things more strict, and then now it's much harder to publish books now. So it's it sucks, guys. You know, it, it sucks to see that there's people who do this. Um, and what sucks is, you know, they're making money, meaning it's it's working, right? 
So because they're making money, they will keep doing it. But I'll tell you one thing. If you keep doing it, if you keep keyword stuffing or making fake fake pen names, ripping off, you know, uh, a successful book, what's going to happen is you will eventually get banned. I'm pretty sure of it because not only um, Amazon is, you know, get, making it stricter for new books that are coming in, they're going back to older books uh, from what I heard and, you know, giving people a warning and uh, telling them to change their titles. I believe some people uh, in my Facebook group too got, you know, this notification saying uh, your book, their book was published, it was doing fine, and then they just got an email all of a sudden from Amazon saying you have to change something because it's causing a misleading experience. So this is a perfect example of why, you know, you just don't want to do this uh, or eventually in the long run, uh, it's not going to work out good. So just a quick video, just really wanted to make sure that it's, this is not what I teach, this is not what I recommend. You know, you shouldn't uh, do this, you know, rip off other people's books, stuff so much keyword in the title that it doesn't even make sense. You know, pen name, faking pen name, faking. Uh, having a pen name itself is fine, but why do you have to make your pen name similar to another book uh, on the same keyword or the same topic, right? Why you have to trick people into that? The whole idea of tricking people to buy your book, you know, that's what the problem here is, right? You don't want to you know, it's about like being not misleading. That's the whole issue with Amazon. Uh, that's the whole issue Amazon is seeing with this. So don't be misleading. Don't trick people. You know, don't play the, the short term game. Okay. See things from, you know, a long term perspective. And uh, yeah, please guys don't, please don't do this. Okay. And uh, that's it for the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.